Hi everyone, it's Toby. Thank you for joining me. Today is about um, showing you you can draw anything and you really can draw anything. And I know you can draw anything. And the reason I know that is because I feel pretty confident that you can draw shapes. You can draw a square, a circle and a triangle and you can name a shape and you can find a shape. And when you can do this, when you can find circles, find squares, find triangles, you can draw anything. But I hear you ask, I can't. Why can't I draw anything? If it's that easy, why can I not literally draw anything and make it perfect? Well, let's talk about that. Let's look at how we use shapes to build up to drawing anything. Because everything is made of shapes. Now the trick here, tip number one, is that we can't run before we can walk. So, do you have trouble finding the shapes in the environment? Well, it's not that you can't do it, because you know what a square is, you know what a triangle is. But too often we get sucked into looking at a house and seeing a house. And what we need to do is get really used to the idea of looking at scenes, looking at people, looking at food, whatever it is that you personally enjoy sketching, drawing the most. You need to start looking at it and identifying the shapes in there. Stop seeing it as a whole scene and make it easy, make it simple in your head. We could take a few examples. Let's look at this really complicated set of buildings. But if I just draw over some lines, we can break it down. And look, our scene is now really simple, but still recognisable for the complex scene that it was originally. You can take more odd and funny scenes. So look at, this is <laughs> me on a camel. And to be honest, if I look at this, I have no idea where to start. But if I start tracing over and finding the shapes, and then I get rid of the actual image itself, you'll see just by drawing some really simple shapes, we've actually got the scene. We've got me, we've got a camel in all sorts of weird perspective and weird dynamics, but yet it works. It really is that simple. Before long, you'll be seeing shapes and that is the first step. The second thing is to work out, are you actually good at this? So if you have skipped step one, do you think it's too easy? Just try some observational drawing skills. Observation is all about drawing what you see, not what you think you see. Here I'm trying to draw a portrait, but I'm drawing from my mind's eye. And it's going horribly wrong. I've got the shapes all wrong. Clearly, what I need to do are some practices to work on these skills. One of my favourite, as you may know if you see my channel, is to use continuous line drawing. Now on my channel you'll find loads more about it, but in short, continuous line drawing is where we draw a scene all in one line. It forces us to really look at the scene, to find those key shapes and to simplify it. Whilst, yes, it doesn't produce a perfect likeness, it really does make us develop those key skills which help us move on in our artistic skills, our observation and towards a more realistic style too. But there are loads of different observational drawing techniques we can use. For example, we can do time drawings, allowing ourselves only 30 or 60 seconds to get the essence of a scene. No look drawings where we just look at the scene and we don't focus on the paper at all. Because too often it's not that you can't see the shapes, it's that you think you already know the scene. You think you know what a person looks like. As soon as that person's in an odd angle, our brain doesn't really know how to do that. We need to focus on that person, that flower, that loaf of bread in a bakery. Again, whatever it is you're sketching and starting simple with observational skills and observational drawing techniques is a great way to start producing great art, but also work on your skills and really work out, are you seeing those shapes as well as you think you are? Now tip three feeds very much into that. Don't rely on rules. So rules are great if we want to create something on our page from nothing. But very often as drawers, as sketchers, that's not what we're doing. We are trying to create a scene from something in front of us, from someone we know, from a little scene or still life that we have. Rules, a classic one, which I do talk about myself, would be something about the proportions of people. So people are seven heads tall. Um, and that's great. That means that we can look at a sketch and go, well, where's this gone wrong? We can analyse the person's height and we can go, well, it went wrong because I got the proportions all wrong. My person is only five heads tall. One of them's the head, four of them are the legs. So the body's way too tiny. Brilliant. But what if the person sat down? 
well, this no longer works. What if the person's at an angle bending over? What if we're looking at them from above or below? That means you get for shortening or lengthening of the person, which will throw that rule off completely. So if we are only getting things right because we rely on rules instead of observation and shapes, of course it goes wrong because as soon as it's complicated, we just can't do it. So rules are great, but don't rely on them. Don't rely on learning rules to think that is gonna make you an amazing observational sketcher. Tip four is to keep it simple. Keep it simple, especially at the beginning. Everyone, the greatest artists in the world, simplify. You can find basically any painting and you will see that they have used gross levels of simplification in places, but they've also identified a focal point. So they put a huge amount of effort into this bit, the bit that you are looking at. When you look around, maybe the people in the background are little just smudges, but they are effective. They work because a simple smudge done in the right way is actually what we kind of see. Look at a reference photo um, or go out to town and look at people in the distance. You can't see people, you can see shapes. And because you see that little shape and you see it in the right context, so in a busy street, well, you assume and your brain assumes you see a person. And that works for everything. We need to keep things simple and we can build up, but we start simple and we can keep building up and keep building up. So if we move tip four onto tip five, we can sketch realistically using shapes. We just get the shapes smaller and smaller and smaller, but we still base it in shape. So we're still taking shapes to get our scene down before we start moving into smaller shapes details. And you know, what is a house if not made up of tiny shapes? It's made up of bricks and they are just rectangles. So you could literally draw every little detail of a house in perfect detail over many, many hours of sketching but only ever think about shapes, if that's what you want to do. It's not what I want to do. For me, I want to sketch quickly and loosely. And so for me, for the same, the same principles, completely different style compared to photorealism, well, grabbing these shapes is, is just as useful because it enables me to sketch quickly, get the essence of the scene and move on and start splashing on some colors. So tip six is where we have to start thinking what kind of artist are we? And I've talked about it there. I've talked about the fact I'm a loose sketcher. Um, also, I'm more of a landscape artist, an urban landscape and also a rural landscape artist. I like sketching people, but the people are secondary to my scene. They are to make the scene busy. My scenes are very rarely portrait. So what kind of sketcher are you? And where are you putting your efforts? Yep, you can draw everything, but if you want to become brilliant at everything, well, that's a tough ask. That's a very tough ask. If you want to be able to sketch everything, sketch a representative scene of anything, well, I feel confident I can sketch people if I have to. I feel confident I can sketch boats if I have to. I feel very confident I can create my style of art based around shapes. What do you enjoy doing? What do you actually want to focus on? Focus on that, but learn the principles, which will mean you're much broader as an artist, but still have that brilliance in your area. And last but not least, of course, is practice. You know, I said at the very beginning, you cannot run before you can walk. You need to start where you are. If you have struggled seeing shapes, then sketch some really simple scenes where you are producing really clear shape-based scenes and enjoying it. Gradually move up that complexity. As you sort of get those artist's eyes in, you can go from simple shape-based scenes to scenes where you start adding in lots of little details, but still try and think about the shapes. And by thinking about the shapes in that way, you're guaranteed to be able to draw and add detail and detail and detail. In practicing, you'll find what you love. You'll find your scenes. You'll naturally become better at it. You can then start breaking the rules on top of the fundamentals. And from there, it's up to you where you want to take it. Now, if you want to take this style of teaching even further, I've got my course on www.sketchloose.co.uk. There's a link below in the description and in the comment that I'll pin below this video. I'd love to see you over there. There's also a free course which I've pinned below in the description and um, that you can get a little taster for the kind of teaching I offer on that website. Without further ado though, 
please go out, enjoy, start seeing shapes, have fun, sketch everything, sketch anything, develop your style and be creative. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.